This is part 72 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to redirect the user to the original requested URL after a successful login. Let me explain what I mean. At the moment, I'm not logged into this application. Notice what happens when I try to create a new employee by clicking on this Create Navigation menu item. ASP.NET Core has automatically redirected me to the login URL which is slash account slash login because to be able to create a new employee, I must be already authenticated. Since I'm not logged in, ASP.NET Core automatically redirected me to this login page of our application. Notice. In the URL, it has also included this query string parameter return URL and the value for this is the URL that I'm trying to access. In this case, slash home slash create. The characters that you see here, percentage 2f are the encoded characters for a for slash. Now when we decode this URL, we see the two for slashes instead of the encoded characters. Now we can make use of this return URL and redirect the user to the URL he is trying to access after a successful login. At the moment, we are not making use of this return URL query string parameter. Every time the user successfully logs in, we are always redirecting him to the index action of our home controller. Look what happens when I now log in. Notice the return URL is ignored and I am on the list view. Now here is what we want to do. If this return URL is present, then we want to redirect the user to that URL after a successful login. If it's not present, then we want to redirect the user to the index action of the home controller. So the first thing that we want to do is pass the value of this return URL query string parameter to this login action within our account controller. So I'm going to include a parameter. The name of this parameter is going to be the same as this query string parameter. So model binding in ASP.NET Core can automatically map this query string parameter value to this action method parameter. Next, we need to check if this return URL is null or empty. For that, if not string dot is null or empty. If the return URL is not null or empty, we want to redirect the user to that return URL. For that, we use the redirect method and to it, we pass our return URL. Else, redirect to the index section of the home controller. Now, let's quickly recap what we have done so far. In the URL, we have the return URL query string parameter and on our login action method, we included a parameter with the same name. So model binding in ASP.NET Core is going to automatically map the query string parameter value to the method parameter. And then inside this login method, we are checking if that return URL is not null or empty. If it is not null or empty, we are using the redirect method to redirect the user to that return URL. Let's see if this actually works. At the moment, return URL query string parameter value is slash home slash create. So when I log in, notice as expected, we are redirected to the return URL, which is slash home slash create. But there is a serious flaw with the way we are using the return URL query string parameter value and redirecting the user. This opens a serious security hole commonly known as open redirect vulnerability. In our next video, we'll discuss with an example, what is this open redirect vulnerability and more importantly, how to fix it. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.